Amen. Though heartache and pain we experience now, still we are healed. Though sorrow may last for the night, joy cometh in the morning. This is not a denial of reality, but a confession of what God can do, what God will do, and yes, even what God is doing right here among us. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and the end. All of being, all of life finds its ground in you. You who are love. Yes, in you we find the peace that is everlasting. O oh God, in you we are able to relish this life that is eternal. O oh God, in you we become more and more our full selves. As we come to the font this day, help us to experience the fullness of the mystery of holy baptism, which opens us up to your possibilities, which are abundantly more than we can ever think or imagine. Speak now through me as you have already been speaking here among your gathered people. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. So, beloved, today we come to the water. We gather around the font in which we encounter the fount of every blessing. By God's invitation, we gather around this font of amazing grace. For though there are times where we feel separate, or we feel alone, or we feel unworthy, God still draws us in as we come to the waters of baptism. Beloved, at the font, God takes the most ordinary of things, water, and does something oh so extraordinary. At the font, God shows up and shows out. God moves through the water to remind us of who we are and whose we are. Beloved children of God, at the font, God draws us together drawing each and every one of us to this place where we not only will witness to the power of a proclaimed faith by one of our siblings, but we also get to participate with her, reaffirming our own baptismal vows and remembering the baptism which, in which we have all been called beloved of God. So today we give thanks because Erica is responding to God's invitation to be baptized. And as she and I have talked, it is so clear that she has an abiding faith in Christ that has been with her and sustained her throughout her life. She grew up in the Baptist tradition, and so she was never baptized as a child. And so as life has been happening, God has been preparing her for this moment, caring for her and nurturing her until this time where she could be baptized. Because God's timing is a funny thing. In all in good time. Amen. <laughs> yes, and there is something about this time, about this season, about this moment where Erica has prayerfully discerned for herself that baptism is the faithful next step on her journey. So let us give thanks to God for this time. Yeah. And yes, this moment is deeply personal, beloved. But let us not be distracted because it is certainly not individualistic. Indeed, baptism, the sacrament of the church, this gift of God in Christ, baptism is a sign of God's love that is always reaching out to us to disrupt our isolation and open up our faith to new possibilities. Baptism incorporates us into the beloved community where anything is possible. In baptism, we proclaim for ourselves what God has been telling us since the beginning. We are not alone. God is with us. And God, from the beginning, has called us very good. And so we are also invited to follow Christ in his own baptism, receiving that same declaration from God from on high. You are my beloved child. I am oh so very proud of you. 
And so as Erica takes baptismal vows for herself, she is not doing this alone. We all join her at the font, church family, life partner, family joining on Zoom, gathering in love and solidarity to witness to the new birth of water in the spirit. In fact, the whole cloud of witnesses, the faithful of God throughout time and space, they meet us here at the font. The whole cloud of witnesses, beloved. So all together we will celebrate this moment and we will reaffirm our commitment to nurture and support Erica in whatever amazing adventures God has in store for her in this unfolding life in Christ. And it is in baptism, beloved, that we cast aside the illusion of separateness and the lies of alienation, and we proclaim the simple and powerful truth. We're in this together now. We're all in the same boat. In preparing for today's service, I asked Erica if there was a Bible verse that was inspiring her in this preparation for baptism, and she shared this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members... And all the members of the body, though many, are one. So it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews and Greeks, enslaved and free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. One spirit. One baptism. One body of Christ. At the font, we remember that in fact, we are all in the same boat. We remember that our lives are interconnected, that our collective flourishing is wrapped up in one another's. We need each other to survive. But maybe more to the point, we need each other to thrive. Yes, by the miracle of baptism today, we will remember that we are all in the same boat. I'm reminded of our scripture lesson this day from the sixth chapter of, God, of John, In this story, we find ourselves in the same boat with the disciples. The disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee at night. Is there anything more terrifying than that? They had just had a long day of ministry feeding the 5,000, and now they finally get into a boat so they can escape from the crowds and get some time to themselves. But it never is always that simple, is it, beloved? Because while they did escape the tumult of the crowds, they entered into a new space of chaos with challenges of its own. So as they rowed across the open waters, the sea started to become rough. The winds began to pick up, and they found themselves in the middle of a great storm. No land anywhere in sight. No big ship coming to save them. I can only imagine the terror as one afraid of the open seas myself. They are completely unmoored, thrown to and fro in their tiny boat at the mercy of the waves and the howling wind. They feel completely out of control. And I imagine that storm happening out there was stirring up a great storm in here. The waves of water stirring up waves of fear and anxiety within them. Beloved, I cannot help but wonder that we are in the same boat as the disciples here. It may not be a literal boat on literal waves, but we do find ourselves in the middle of a storm. A surface-level calm has given way to choppy waters. We feel the winds of change swirling about us, and we are losing our bearings as we just simply try to survive. Like the disciples, we long for solid ground. And like the disciples, perhaps we are wishing too for a time when life was simple and straightforward. Like six hours ago, (laughs) when Christ was nearby and his voice was clear and all we had to do was serve the people around us and be thankful. But that's not the season that we're in. The world is raging around us with confusion and violence and we cannot help but feel the anxiety and fear growing around us and within us. Now already I am inspired by the image of the disciples keep rowing through the storm. They keep rowing. The gospel writer says that they rowed three or four miles in these desperate conditions. What an image of faith 
that comes alongside fear and despair. What more, this is a powerful image of how faith in community gives us the courage to do what we need to do. It is a courage that does not erase our fear, but it does release fear's power over us. Thanks be to God. And still, in the middle of the storm, on these perilous open seas, a miracle happens. With strained eyes through the ocean spray, the disciples see a figure out on the water in the direction from which they came. And when that figure gets a little closer, they see that it is Jesus himself walking on the water, coming towards the boat. The, the text testifies that this actually strikes a different fear in the disciples, a new fear. Yes, they had already been afraid of the power of the wind and sea, and yet they are witnessing to a power even greater than these. Jesus walking on water, defying expectations and defying the laws of physics and displaying a power in its quiet and its calm that is more powerful than all the violence and confusion of the moment. This power is unimaginable. This experience is unexplainable. And so Jesus reaches out and speaks a revelatory and grounding word to his disciples. I am. Now our translation this morning said, it is I, but the direct translation is I am. And he closes by saying, do not be afraid. To allay the disciples' fear, Jesus just says, I am. One miracle walking on water followed by another. Jesus has already walked on the water revealing the power and glory of God. By sign, Jesus has connected himself to the God of Israel who has always revealed himself in and through and around water. And then in a powerful act of vulnerability, Jesus discloses his deepest self to the disciples. He says, I am. This I am, the divine name of God. I am what I am. I will be what I will be. This holy name of God that is existence and breath itself. And what a glorious grace that Jesus would reveal himself to us with such courageous vulnerability. Jesus could sense the fear his disciples might be having, this fear that might be distancing themselves from Jesus in this moment. And so Jesus adds for them, and maybe even for himself, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. It's as though Jesus were saying, I'm still me, <laughs> just more fully myself. Have we ever had those moments where we tell somebody who we are, where we're still ourselves, but just more fully ourselves? Jesus says, let's not shy away from who I am, but let's lean into this truth together. You see, Jesus wants his self-revelation to inspire his disciples with courage in the middle of the storm, because it is through courage that we open ourselves up to the possibility of transformation. It's through courage that we can make a change in our circumstances. And it is through courage that faith and hope and love become active. And so it is, beloved, on the open waters, by sign and by word, that Jesus reveals his full self to the disciples. He is the one who walks in the way of the God of Israel, who has revealed God's self always as life and liberation and love through water through the waters of creation, through the liberating waters of exodus, and yes, now through the waters of baptism. Jesus meets his disciples where they're at. In a time of real fear, in a time of real unsafety. And while there are other versions of the story in the Gospels, this version in John, Jesus doesn't calm the storm. And this is a critical observation because as much as we want God to come and calm the storms in our lives, sometimes Jesus meets us in the storm and the storm continues. And we do have storms raging around us. Election anxiety that is raging, 
police violence against black women and men that continues to punctuate our lives. Wars and heinous acts of violence against innocent people continue unabated. So for some mysterious reason, God's first response isn't to calm the storm. It is to meet us right there in the middle of it, to reveal his full self to us, and to inspire us with the courage to remember who we are. So let us not be afraid, beloved. Because even on the open seas, it is by water that Jesus comes to us. Let us not be afraid because even on the open seas, it is by water that the power of Jesus unlocks the courage of our hearts. And I love that it appears that the faithful response of the disciples is simply this, to ask Jesus to get into the boat with them. (laughs) Maybe they're afraid he'll fall through the water. Or maybe they're afraid that they can't live one more moment without him. Because what is our boat without Jesus? In the story, we don't know if Jesus ever got in the boat. Because it simply says that when the disciples expressed their desire for Jesus to enter the boat, at that moment when they expressed their heart's deepest desire, this is the moment when they finally reached solid ground. Maybe they did make landfall. And perhaps they also realize the truth, that God's love is the ground of our being, that Christ is the solid rock on which we stand. What if that were enough for a beginning? What if that were enough to simply express that we not only need Jesus, but that we want Jesus to join us in the boat with us? What might change for us when we simply say yes? to what God is trying to do in us and through us? How might the world begin to be transformed? We can only imagine. Scripture reminds us that amazing things happen around water. God's presence is revealed among us. Jesus reveals his full self to us, and we are invited to claim for ourselves our true identity as beloved children of God. And in this confidence as children of God, we are invited to look around us, to remember that we are surrounded by a beloved community and a great cloud of witnesses. Yes, at the font, we are invited to remember that we're all in the same boat. And when we do, may we find that by the amazing grace of God, we are already standing on solid ground. Thanks be to God. Amen.